This week in an exclusive interview with Forces News, the UK ambassador to Kuwait suggested that the UK government would push forward with plans to establish a new permanent base in Kuwait. This would mean that the British government for the first time since 1966 would have a firm footing east of Suez and would bring forward the idealised rejuvenation of Britain's global role, supposedly independent of the United States. Now, of course, Kuwait used to be a British protectorate for about 60 years, from around about 1899 to 1961, and that ended with the run on the pound devaluation, uh, the devaluation of Britain's imperial role on the world stage. In 2016, uh, the Financial Times and The Guardian published stories um, as a result of comments made by British ministers, even Boris Johnson, the UK Foreign Secretary, uh, showing that the British government really wanted to push forward with a, a new resurrection of this East of Suez policy of Britain being rerouted in the East. We're going to look at the reasons why this might not be the best direction to go in. So this desire to have a new permanent base in Kuwait is obviously in recognition of the important role that both the Gulf and Asia will have in the future of the world's economy and political framework. But of course, the first main problem is that it sets us up as a competitor against European partners. Of course, this is precipitated uh, through Brexit, which has already separated us off politically from the EU. Now you've got France, who is... Uh, not only engaging in soft power with the new Abu Dhabi Louvre Museum, but also selling huge amounts of arms and aircraft to countries such as Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Bahrain and Kuwait. And of course you've got the Germans going uh, far more down the soft power route of uh, engaging in uh, electricity memorandums of understanding and transport links and engineering links with countries such as Iran uh, and Qatar itself. Um, so. This this isn't really constructive because what you're seeing is uh, almost an engagement in uh, competition with people who we state after Brexit we're still going to be partners with in terms of security in the Gulf uh, and, and cooperation over Russia. We say we care about security in the region, but the very idea of establishing a new permanent base in Kuwait violates the idea of even the pretense of us being a honest broker in the region. It sows division and it exacerbates existing tensions, both political, military, economic and sectarian. It's impossible for the UK to state that it's an honest broker or to state that it cares about lowering extremism and violence if it seeks to enlarge its military imprint in the region. The only practical use that a permanent military base for the British in Kuwait could have is to strike Iran or at least preparing us towards striking Iran. And this leads us to the third question. Is this in British interests or in Saudi interests? We already know that with Brexit, we're going to see an exaggeration of the connections between the UK uh, and American policy and that of the Israeli-Saudi axis. So are we establishing a new permanent base to uh, put our foot firmly within the camp of those who seek uh, an exaggerated conflict with Iran? It appears so. This violates our national interests. Not only the national interests of the UK, but that of Scotland as well. It brings us within the possibility of, by proxy or directly, a conflict with Hezbollah or being dragged into the quagmire that is Yemen. It means exacerbating extremism, death and destruction in the region. But it also means putting in harm's way the civilians within the Persian Gulf and also means that our UK troops and Scottish regiments will be sent to places without the proper equipment, but also sent to needless conflicts of which there is no political outcome or justification. Just a little shout out to Gordon Guffrey on Twitter, who reminded me when I first commented on the story on social media about Dennis Healy's uh, Defence White Paper review in 1966, which uh, as many of you historians, both amateur and professional, will know, was a precursor to not only the uh, recalibration of, of UK economic and international interest, it was also a precursor to us um, 
going further down the road to collaboration with European countries in the EEC, as it was then called. But the white paper, the defence white paper in 1966, uh, suggested that we close a whole range of bases that we had, that we were clinging on to as the empire was disintegrating, as decolonization in Africa and and the uh, and Indochina really sped up. And through the de devaluation of the pound, Britain could no longer keep hold of all these bases. So we saw the closing down of bases in Yemen, Bahrain, Kuwait, and a whole range of sheikdoms. So big shout out to Gordon for reminding me of that. And again, shows that relationship towards... Um, going into Europe and rejecting the imperial past. With Brexit, we're seeing the complete reversal of that process that begun in 1961 right through to the 66 review. Now we are fully engaged in Empire 2.0. We are rejecting Europe and we are finding solace in the Atlantic Bridge and also in the culmination of this uh, opening of a new permanent base in Kuwait. Originally, when Britain had its protectorate duties over the sheikdom of Kuwait, it was supposedly to guard Kuwaiti interests against the then uh, powerful Ottoman Empire in 1891 to 1899. And then, we, of course, we had the guarantee of uh, Kuwaiti security uh, when our erstwhile then friend, Saddam Hussein, uh, was eyeing up to uh, take over the sheikdom. But now we have to ask the question, who is going to invade Kuwait? The answer to that, for many critiques, would be Iran. But Iran hasn't invaded any of its surrounding neighbours. Of course, it's been engaged in countering ISIS in Iraq. Uh, it certainly had a role in uh, supporting the Assad government in Syria. But it's made no moves against Kuwait. We have to ask questions about whether it's in Scottish interests to have this retrenchment of British troops in the Persian Gulf. Whose interests is it serving?